good whatever time of day it is. Welcome to the Turn Face Comedy Podcast presented by TurnFaceComedy.com. I am your host, Horeo, and with me today are two special guests. Hey, it's Morgulon. What's up, it's Crypto Spang. And uh, we're going to be talking into the believe it or not, here on this podcast. I, I don't know if y'all can believe it, but... No. There's no fucking way we can talk about Nintendo. Could be. But before we get into that, I thought we'd uh, talk about some content we have coming to the website really soon. Um, as soon as when? Uh, tomorrow. Monday. Uh, which is October 20th. We have a brand new Loot Crate unboxing video, which has been recorded for a few days, but out of respect to Loot Crate, we decided not to post it until they told us to. Uh, but it has a different host this week, or this month. Um, Morgula, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes. Well, unfortunately for me, my computer decided it was done, and it doesn't work anymore. So I've been unable to record anything, or stream anything, for a while now. So... Our friend Dentonymous decided to take over for the next couple months to do the Loot Crate unboxings. And I've watched his video because I already got mine – actually got mine today, uh, which I guess if you're watching this tomorrow, I would have gotten it yesterday. But um, <laughs> he, he did a very good job with the unboxing. I really, really liked his video. I might take some pointers from it to – improve mine in the future but you will enjoy his unboxing video and speaking of uh things that you were doing that you're no longer doing because you're a uh, computer we we briefly mentioned it on twitter and facebook we didn't make a big deal out of it but you might have noticed the streamer terror has been put on a indefinite hiatus and that is because morgoth is traditionally the host and none of us really have the time or internet speed to stream every single week but and this is a big but the stream of terror is coming back and it could be as soon as two weeks from now probably three but it will be a little different morgoloth may or may not be there depending on what his uh current um tablets can do but we will be doing something different in the form of group streams and our first one will be a return of uh, Cards Against Humanity, which I think we're all really excited about because we had so much fun the last time we streamed that. Yeah, fun. We, we did. We like didn't even care about the chat for once. We just played. It, it was fun. Yeah, those are the best streams. Are the ones that you're just having fun. The chat's there. You're having fun with the chat, but you're not relied on the chat to get content out. And that's what you know these group streams are all about: having fun. Yeah. And and that that might be hitting the site. Uh, or hitting com. probably not October 31st because of Halloween, but November 7th, maybe. We're talking about it. It was Dentonymous' idea, so hit up at Dentonymous on Twitter and uh, say thank you or you hate him, depending on how you feel about this. <laughs> anyway, moving on to our first topic, which is a mini topic. Uh, we, we usually have like three big topics we do, but this week we have one big topic and one uh, mini topic, and that is Twitter is now going to start showing you tweets in your own feed your personal feed that they think you'd like regardless if you're uh you follow the person at all how do you feel about this i don't mm. use twitter so i don't give a shit fair enough <laughs> personally I, no go ahead no uh, well i only use twitter a little bit i've i got onto it at first just to follow some some people um mostly bruno floss and then um kind of went from there whenever i needed my own but um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but I guess having been on Facebook, I'm already used to being shown, hey, do you like this? Here's a post you might like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's what I want to get to. Like, personally, this is, like, the reason people hate Facebook right here is exactly what Twitter's going to be doing. Do you that's celebrate good. this Indian holiday? No, I, I don't, but thank yeah, you for the post. Like, I, I've had so many times where I've just been following some random, like, Indian people that I've never even heard of, and I've never even touched their page or anything like that. I, I And I've just been following them, and then, like, three days into it, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Why am I following them? And Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy shit. Like, I, I get the whole, you know, social networks need to make money. Have ads on the side. I don't care. 
But don't don't sell me somebody's fucking posts. Yeah, that's, that's just the biggest bullshit in the world. Like the re the reason I'm using your service is because I want to follow this set number of people. Yeah, there's this um uh, a Facebook page actually that I follow. Uh, Brock Obama, not Barack, like Brock from Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> and he he's been complaining about the Facebook reach thing, so he's been like jacking off on it by just taking some, someone else's <laughs> posts and sharing it and just ge basically cheating the system so that his posts actually get the reach that he used to have before yeah, Facebook started shafting. And, and, there, and there's another thing with Facebook. You know, pages you follow may not show in your feed, but all these people who pay to be in your feed show up in your feed, which is the biggest bullshit ever. Uh, yeah. I know people that follow uh, turn-based comedy on Facebook never see one of our posts. It is, it's just bullshit. Wow. It, it's so dumb. So Twitter needs to stick to what they've been doing and not try to be Facebook. Because Facebook's on the way out, and Twitter's where it's at um, for a lot of people. I mean, I, I still enjoy Facebook because I can, you know, talk privately with people. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much the only reason I use it. But as for, like, promoting shit, you know, Twitter's awesome at promoting shit or, ha you know, not really having conversations because I can't really talk in, what, 160 characters or less. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the hell it is. I don't tweet that much. 140. 140. There you go. Anyway, that, that's Twitter news. Go bitch at Twitter. Um, send as many tickets as you can. Get rid of this shit. Or, you know, if you like it, just be like, hey, we like this, and we're complete tools. Or or if you think it's an okay idea, at least have them set up a way that it's optional. Don't make me yeah. do shit. Like, if that, that's fine, whatever. People who opt into it, who want to see new stuff, let them opt, in, opt into it. But don't force the people that don't clearly don't want anything to do with this to have to put up with it. It just makes people – instead of making money, you're actually going to be losing money because people are going to not use your goddamn site. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like what happened to MySpace when they started changing things. So be oh, careful, yeah. Twitter. Oh, gosh. I'll end up being MySpace too. Anyway, the real topic of this podcast is Nintendo DLC. And we and we've talked about Nintendo DLC in the past, but we haven't really gotten into in-depth analysis of our opinions and what we think. So we're going to take a minute to look at what Nintendo's done in the past regarding DLC, what they're doing right now, and what we want them to do, and what we think they're going to do. Please use bullshit! Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> the biggest, I guess, example of Nintendo DLC, like from a first-party Nintendo game... That comes to mind would it be would be new Super Luigi U. Okay, mm -hmm. I I, I want to touch on that because I just clearly just said it was bullshit. I like the idea behind Luigi U. Not a big fan that the levels are like a hundred seconds long, but they're more challenging, so it makes up for it. Yeah. Um, I don't like the fact that they completely reused the same home world and it was a completely new game. And see, I agree or disagree there, but. Mm -hmm. I, I see. It, it would have been fine if it was just like extra levels added into the and added into the game, or like like a dark world type thing from like a link to the past where you go into a warp pipe and it's the same world just with different levels. What I'm not okay with is them taking the exact same game, selling it as DLC that you access from the game, from the menu, while also selling it as a disc that you can buy as a complete standalone game. And the levels are just the same home world and everything. I disagree with that too. I think new Super Luigi U is a great idea, and it worked. It worked. Don't get me wrong. I love. Okay. I love new. I love Luigi U, but I just feel like they shouldn't have sold it as a DLC and a standalone game. They should have just picked one and stuck with it. But that's what make makes it the Nintendo DLC is they like to do things a little different than everybody else. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, but. It's sometimes a little bit different is completely just it looks like they are trying to either fish for attention or fish for money. And with the Luigi U DLC standalone game, it looks like they're doing a little bit of both. Well, as far as the overworld being the same exact overworld from New Super Mario, uh, bleh, New Super Mario Brothers U, um... That's fine with me because it is, you know, I'm paying half the price or even yeah. less than half the price if I'm getting the DLC version. Yeah. But 
Luigi U is a challenge game, and through and through, it's it's a challenge game. I haven't played it that much, but you know, I appreciate what it is. Oh yeah, now, the, like the I set... said, don't get me wrong. I I completely love the game. I just now the standalone version. It's it's the the, the collector in you. You see a new hardcore Mario game. Uh, I say hardcore loosely here, but um. You see it on the shelf, and you're like, I need that on my shelf at home. Uh. But at the same time, it's like... it was a, It's pretty much a full game, other than it uses a, a full brand new game. Other than it uses the old map. So I get the whole release it as a standalone game. Whereas, you know, like we'll talk about later, the Hyrule Warriors DLC. You couldn't really release... I guess you could, but it really wouldn't be that fun. Release that as... That it's on Sentinel in the game. I, I, I get that Nintendo likes to do their own thing, but I think they could definitely take a page out of From Software's book with Hyrule Warriors, or really any Zelda game, and uh, in, like, Dark Souls. Um, to get to the Artorias of the Abyss DLC, you have to uh, you, you have to rescue Dusk of Ulysseal in Dark Root Basin, and then after that, you have to go to the Duke's archives, kill a certain crystal golem and get a pendant from there then go all the way back to dark root basin to get grabbed and sucked into the royal garden sanctuary or whatever it's called sanctuary garden i think it is well i guess we can jump right into hyrule warriors dlc <laughs> anyway <laughs> since we, we got the kind of the opinion of louis to you out of the way yeah well, I, thought, I thought my transition was fine but uh. <laughs> well and then one thing i want to say is it's it's not a completing the game that you bought you bought the game you know the super mario brothers you complete and then you get you could beat stuff. it and then the luigi U dlc is its own standalone you know you don't have to get the dlc for the game to the main yeah. game to feel complete which is a point we'll, we'll we'll talk about later but hyrule warriors as transitions <laughs> anyway uh crypto's fang did it earlier but yeah Hy hyrule warriors and I'm going to give my opinion about Hyrule Warriors because I've been harsh about it in the past. I might have said bad things online about it. I don't know. But my friends know I was like, oh, Hyrule Warriors. Really, you're going to make a Dynasty Warriors game? With I, was, I was the same way, and I still kind of am the same way because I played, I played Hyrule Warriors, and I'm not thrilled. I can understand why people would like it, but uh, to quote Chugga Conroy, if I may, he, he, def he said something that I completely agree with. You're either going to love Hyrule Warriors or you're going to absolutely hate it. Yes. And I and I went into it thinking I'm gonna hate this game. I'm gonna fucking hate this game, because I, I never had a good experience with the Dynasty Warriors game. I haven't had fun with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I actually never played a Dynasty Warriors game, and I felt like, oh, this might be a good uh, opportunity to try both Dynasty Warriors while giving Zelda something fresh and new. But at the same time, I was kind of scared of what they might do after certain franchises taking the fall. We don't like to talk about those nuts and bolts times. <laughs> well, and I've only played Dynasty Warriors, I think, once, and it was a very short time that I played it. So, well, it is. It, Hyrule Warriors is definitely a Dynasty Warriors game before it is a Zelda game. It does have a Zelda skin, but it has a Zelda feel to it. It has a big Zelda feel to it. Now, I'm gonna say I'm gonna finish my story before I get interrupted again. That I, I was negative on this game. I talked shit about it. Morgoloth bought it, and I told him he was an idiot. And um, I was at uh, Best Buy the other day uh, with a friend of mine who may or may not be in a special Halloween video coming up here in about, you know, two weeks. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I see Hyrule Warriors on the shelf, and I'm like, you know what? I need the Club Nintendo points. <laughs> Why the fuck not? So I bought the game, and I went home, put it in. And I'm doing that first mission, and my friend was next to me, and he he said he looked at my face and just saw the smile like creep up on my face, which is really weird. You shouldn't stare at people while they're playing games. Well, I mean, <laughs> when someone is like, "Oh, this game fucking sucks. It's gonna bring Zelda down." Blah blah blah, all that shit. You kind of are like, "Yeah, I can't wait for that moment where it just snaps," and they realize they could work completely fucking wrong. Yeah. And I admit, and I, I, I think I messaged Morgoth like after I bought the game, and I'm like, I don't admit I'm wrong that often, but I was wrong about Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> now, it's it's very true though. You're either gonna love this game or you're gonna hate it. Um, most of the complaints I hear are about the original characters that they put into the game. 
I don't know why they're complaining. I like all the characters personally. I thought the story. I I'm pretty much done with the story mode, which is sad because I bought the game like three days ago. But I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the game modes. It does get a little repetitive, but you're having so much fun you don't give a shit. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It it just didn't crack right with me. I I can understand that. And we lost Morgoloth. He may or may not be back. Anyway. <laughs> That was the Skype noise. Sorry if it showed up in the podcast. Okay. I, I wanted to go over the DLC for this game, and, and I, I kind of want to talk about if they're doing it right or doing it wrong. So first of all, Hyrule Warriors is pretty much a complete game. It has a lot of content. I fr- I played a ton of hours, and I'm, I'm almost done with the story, and I'm nowhere near, near done with the adventure mode. Um, Real quick before you go on, we just got a message from Morgoloth saying his surface just shut off, so he'll probably be back in a couple minutes. All right, and and this is the problem with doing podcasts over Skype. Weird shit happens. Yeah. Anyway, Hyrule Warriors DLC. First of all, we got to talk about uh, Club Nintendo is offering a free Ganondorf skin, actually two skins, if you register the game of Club Nintendo, which is cool. I like free skins, and and I think Club Nintendo should offer more free DLC for first party or second party Nintendo games in the future. Because it, it promotes me to buy games because I like Club Nintendo points. But I also like DLC if it's free. Also, yeah. <laughs> also uh, Nintendo slash everybody else who made the game gave away three free DLC characters, which are Sia, Vaga, and Wizro. Those are free to everybody. They're not part of any DLC pack. You turn on your Wii U right now, put in Hyrule Warriors, you're going to get the free characters. That's, that's all that shit's free as long as you have a Club Nintendo account. For the Ganondorf skin and just play the game for the free DLC characters. Now, uh, Morgoloth said he's back. I don't know if he's in the call yet. I'm here. Okay, Morgoloth is here. Anyway, we, we just discussed the free uh, Ganondorf skin via Club Nintendo and the three free characters. We're not going to cover that again just because you weren't here. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Nintendo is offering a $20 season pass, quote-unquote, Hero yeah. Pyrrell pack, and it includes all four... DLC packs. One is already out three in the future. If you buy that season pack, you get a Dark Link skin that goes with it. Yeah, you get the Dark Link skin completely free, independent of a different pack, so that won't come with anything else. You yeah, also yeah get, you have to get the season pack for Dark Link. You'll also get the Master Quest pack, uh, which is out right now, I believe. Um, yeah. You get um, Epona when you play as Link, uh, five more story episodes, uh, a Master Quest mode, and uh, the outfit Sia and Lana with the Guardian of Time costumes. Costumes. Uh, later on, you'll get a Twilight Princess pack, a Boss pack, and a Majora's Mask pack. Which I'm the that those the Twilight yeah. Princess and Majora's Mask pack. I'm really looking forward to because those are two of my three favorite Zelda games of all time. And hopefully, the playable characters they add are relevant to the story. Yeah, like I would definitely love to see a Skull Kid from the Majora's Mask pack, or a maybe a Princess Midna from the Twilight Princess, or a Zant if he's not already playable. Uh, Zant is playable, but that's spoilers. So sorry, guys. <laughs> well, they announced <laughs> that. They already announced that in the when they announced the game. That was yeah. in the videos. Uh, touching on ma- the Master Quest pack, which came out this week. Uh, if you want just the Master Quest pack, it's going to be seven ninety nine. As are the next two DLC packs. The boss pack, which is the final pack, will be two ninety nine. But uh, the Master Quest pack, you got a brand new adventure map. Now, a lot of people were really disappointed, and you touched on this earlier with uh, Luigi U. Yeah. The adventure map is literally the same exact adventure map from the first one, with just different rewards. Oh, well, it's it's just... It's just it's, overworld, so to speak. So the, the thing is, though, the Master Quest, I believe they're going to be handling it slightly like they did with Ocarina of Time Master Quest, like in the 3D version. Where it's it's just a harder version of the game. Yeah. With things well, in different places. That's what Zelda Second Quest is, though, in the original Legend of Zelda, and that's yeah. the point of the Master Quest. The, the difference is, though, like in Luigi U, they've got all these sort of like different content, and it's the same overworld. I feel like they could have change the overworld slightly or like reverse the overworld and like i said gone through like a warp pipe to get to it specifically for the dlc version yeah and again like the the cutscenes just for the luigi u dlc specifically the the standalone game for luigi u they didn't change the cutscenes at all except to like 
not include Mario and Nabbit's there now. Yeah. I'm. That that doesn't make any sense. Like, why have a Mario game with a Mario like? Just take all the Mario game cutscenes and everything, put it in a new game, and take out Mario. What what kind of shit is that? It's called DLC, and you got it for fifteen bucks. So who cares? <laughs> but um, that adventure map. A lot of people are saying, "Why didn't we get a new map?" There are a hundred fucking Zelda games they can pick from. Uh, for example, you have Link's Awakening. You have Link to the Past. You know these two D games with their maps laid out somewhat like the Legend of Zelda map. They could have done something with. So I'm hoping we get something like that with the Twilight Princess pack and the Majora's Mask pack, which both oh, come yeah. with in a new adventure map. Um, All together, DLC, you get five new story missions. Uh, you get, uh, I think, two weapon types, three new characters, uh, seven costumes, oh. uh, something around that, and three adventure, paps, uh, yeah, adventure maps and two new game modes. All for 20 bucks, mind you. If you buy the season pass, if you buy them individually, you're gonna pay eight, sixteen, twenty-four. You're gonna place. You're gonna pay twenty-seven dollars. Yeah, seven <laughs> you, bucks more. Plus, you're not gonna get the Dark Link skin. So, if you're gonna go yeah. the DLC anyway, you might as well just buy the season pass. Yeah, yeah. and I almost bought it, but in a moment of weakness, I'm waiting until I finish the adventure map to buy it though, because there's no real point unless I wanna I wanna fuck some bitches up with the phone up. But mm. see, I I completely understand that because I haven't touched Borderlands two in, in quite a while. Um, because I got all my characters except my assassin, which was my main, um, up to level 72, and I was just like, well, what the fuck do I do now? So I just put the game down for a while. I hadn't even touched, I only touched the first two DLCs, and I eventually went back and played Hammerlock, wasn't that thrilled with it, and then last night I finished Tiny Tina's DLC, completely blown away with it, but some people might look at that and be like, oh, why'd you buy the DLC if you're never gonna fucking play it? Well, <laughs> I bought yeah, the season. Exactly. I bought the season pass, so I got the DLC pre- pretty much for. F- I, I pretty much got Hammerlock for free and paid for the other three DLCs in their entirety. So. Well, when I bought Borderlands One, I got uh, when I bought it, it was like the Legendary Edition had all the DLC. Oh yeah. Uh, same with the the two or three Batman games I own, I got all the free DLC with it. But uh, to finish the DLC that I didn't actually cover everything, I feel bad about this. The adventure map on Master Quest has special requirements for each stage. Uh, there's if you haven't played Hyrule Warriors yet, the adventure map is laid up, laid out as the map of Hyrule from Legends of Zelda 1. Where each stage, you go in there, and you can use secret bombs, you know, candles, whatever, to find the secret and unlock something. Uh, and then you go in and you, you're you not playing Legends of Zelda 1, but you go in and you do, basically, the main point of the game, Dynasty Warriors. Uh, with the Master Quest pack, there's special requirements such as you can't heal during that battle. So that's interesting to me. I, I feel like if they would have marketed the game as the first Legend of Zelda, but with Dynasty Warriors type feel to it, I feel like it would have turned a lot of people that don't like the game from how they marketed it now to, hey, this game could be really interesting. It is interesting. And and, and I... I I, I don't know how to explain this. I've never had a game where I knew I was going to hate, bought it, and then loved it. I've, it's new to me. But moving forward, I, I the point of us talking about all this DLC here is that's a third-party Nintendo game with a first-party character. That's how they're handling DLC for this game, which I, I kind of agree for the most part. $20 for all that sounds pretty decent. Yeah, and they're doing I, DLC pretty much just the same way every other game does DLC. Yeah, that's pretty much standard. Um, but we have a better example of DLC going on right now with Mario Kart 8, because that is the first party Nintendo game. Yeah. And now, um, I I looked into this for you guys, so y'all didn't have to. But Mario Kart 8, the first DLC for the game, was Mercedes-Benz cars dressed as carts. Yeah, and- <laughs> I, I saw that, and I was just like, what the fuck are they doing? But that's free. That's all free DLC. Oh yeah, free definitely. That and therefore, you know, I, I wasn't too miffed about it because like if you had to pay like three bucks just to drive a Mercedes Benz in Mario Kart Eight, what kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> exactly. Um, as far as the rest of the real DLC, we, I don't consider that DLC. I consider that Mercedes wanting to sell cars. Yeah. To children, I get. I, fuck it, I don't care. Well, uh, Mario Kart Eight is like a family game. I, I know, especially my family, we bought every single Mario Kart game from 
64 because we didn't have a SNES before I was born. We bought from 64 all the way up to Mario Kart 8, and we all played it together, and we absolutely loved it. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much the same. I, I played Mario, Super Mario Kart for the SNES with my family. I never played 64 or GameCube. Yeah. But, but I kind of got back into Mario Kart around Wii, and that was with family and friends, so... I had it on 64. I played the hell out of that game. I played the hell out of Super Mario Kart before 64, and, and I never played 64 because I was happy with my Mario Kart. Yeah. I was a kid that didn't need the newest and greatest thing. I needed fun shit. I love to have fun in games, and that's all it's about. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely was the same way, and we had a Dreamcast like before I could even remember like being conscious at all we had a dreamcast and my parents told stories about it and then the 64 came out and they traded the dreamcast for the 64 so i did not ever really got the chance to experience that but the 64 the 64 just oh my god i i feel like if i talk about the 64 i'll just be the generic nintendo fanboy but that really <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It, it really defined my childhood. Yeah, the PlayStation was there, and I love the PlayStation. Um, but the Nintendo 64 really just had a lot of games that opened my eyes to what video games could be, like Pokemon uh, Stadium, for for instance, uh, and yeah. especially Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we're kind of going over time here, so I'm going to just cover the Mario Kart 8 DLC really fast, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, so you have two packs. Uh, the first one's the Legend of Zelda pack, uh, which comes with three characters, which are Link, Tanuki, Mario, and Cat Peach. You get four vehicles, including the, the Blue Falcon, and I believe a, a Zelda uh, Link motorcycle. Um, you have eight new tracks and two cups. I didn't look up the names of the cups, but one of them was the Triforce Cup, and the other one looked like the Yoshi Egg Cup. Yeah. Uh, the other DLC pack is the Animal Crossing pack, uh, which comes with three new characters, which are Villager, Isabella, and Dry Bowser, who is basically Dry Bones, or Bowser in a Dry Bones skin. You have four new vehicles, eight tracks, and two new cups, which look like the Leaf Cup and the Cat Bell Cup. Uh, both packs are $8. Um, the Legend of Zelda one hits the East Store in November, in November this year, Animal Crossing in May 2015, and you can buy both packs together for $12. Um... Yeah, but on the $12 pack, there is a special bonus. You get eight new characters for, or not characters, colors for Yoshi and Shy Guy, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty legit. For 12 bucks, I mean, hell yeah, that's cheap. It's yeah. well, cheap-ish. I mean, if you're an eight-year-old kid, you're probably not going to be paying 12 bucks <laughs> for anything, but whatever. But I think that's a unique way to do it. The The thing that sits like stands out to me, though, is how cheap these DLC packs are. Yeah, definitely. Um, relatively to, uh, relative to Hyrule Warriors, the packs are individually the same price. And you could argue that getting both packs for eleven ninety nine is higher than the four packs for the uh, uh, Hyrule Warriors at $20. But you have to remember, one, uh, well, one of the Hyrule Warriors packs is only $3. Yeah. So it kind of messes with the price of things. And on top of that, it's two packs for like two dollars more than half price of what the four packs is so i mean come on yeah so it's it's interesting you're getting a lot um i the character thing you know that's interesting uh the vehicles yeah that's cool but i i'm into you know i want to play new tracks i want to play new cups i want to have more fun but See, i i don't remember a lot of mario kart 8 um because i haven't played it too terribly much but i do know that they brought back the coin mechanic from Super Mario Kart and I do believe that the characters don't really have anything individual about themselves. So The carts do? Yeah, the carts do definitely but the characters not really and I believe you can use just about like th there's different weight classes that you use all the carts with that they started with in Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah. Um, I feel like going back to Double Dash they could have given every character a special item to use like the baby mario and baby luigi had the chain chomps the toad and toadette had the golden mushroom uh peach and daisy had my favorite power up the power of love that absorbed <laughs> two power ups so goddamn op yeah <laughs> I, I just feel like since they're doing dlc characters they could have done something like that too with all the characters but 
I mean, I can't complain. The, th- the thing about all this DLC, though, is it doesn't finish the game. It's The game's already complete. It adds just more fun replay value to the game, basically. Replay value. Yeah. Whereas, in the past, I've been really harsh about DLC because a lot of them, you know, they're already built into the game. What the hell is up with that? DLC's, DLC's supposed to be an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can... Well, okay, this is going to sound a little contradictory on my part, but a big... A, a big falter of that, I guess, is the word. I, it's not the word I was looking for, but it's the best I can think of. Is Mortal Kombat Nine? Um, I love Mortal Kombat to death, and I will play the shit out of Mortal Kombat. And I bought the complete edition for Mortal Kombat Nine, so I didn't have to buy all the DLC packs separate. But all of the characters, Freddy Krueger, Scarlet, and all them, they were on the disc, and you had to buy the packs to unlock them. That's not cool. And, yeah, and exactly, looking back at, like, Mortal Kombat for the PlayStation 1, you have unlockable characters in that game. Yeah. What the hell? I mean, how would you feel if, way back in the day, you are playing the game, but you couldn't unlock these characters, you had to buy them? Yeah. And I think that, that takes a lot of the game away when you have no unlockables anymore. It's all DLC. And and that's one of the points I wanted to make about Hyrule Warriors, but totally forgot. It's Hyrule Warriors had unlockable characters in the game. They had unlockable skins in the game. They did not every unlockable was freaking DLC, which I think is a good thing. You know, you got to have your unlockables. You can have your DLC packs, but who cares? You need your unlockables in the game to keep flow. I'm going to swing this back to Mortal Kombat for just a second. Another thing that I just did not appreciate in that game is I had the Xbox version. So I already had to, you know, to play online, I had to buy Xbox Gold. So I had to shell out like 30 bucks for three months and then... On top of that, you have to buy the season pass, as they call it, that doesn't give you any of the DLC. It just allows you to play online with other people. That's just bullshit. Wow. That is complete bullshit. And uh, I, I hope to God that for the sake of my, or, or my Ed Boone, I, I don't remember his first name, uh, for the sake of everyone who worked on the original Mortal Kombat, I just hope that they don't take that direction again. And... Swinging it over back to Nintendo, uh, another popular game that was released this month was Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS. Yes. There are so many chances for DLC in this game. New characters, new skins, new levels, um, subspace sequel maybe, please? <laughs> I, I yeah. would love to play a subspace sequel. I was a big fan of Subspace Emissary, and I was disappointed that subspace didn't get a sequel. Exactly. And I, I think... Smash will do good. Uh, they ha- they obviously are going to have the characters that are unlockable still. Yeah. They I don't think they've announced any character they've announced so far will be DLC. I think every character they've announced is in the game. If I remember right, they have announced a DLC character, Ice Climbers, which, for one, that's kind of crappy because Ice Climbers has been in the game since Melee. Um, but-, but Ice Climbers might be an afterthought because Ice Climbers wasn't originally supposed to be in the game. Yeah. It's just so many people were pissed off when they found out Ice Climbers weren't going to be in the game. Well, that they, Nintendo was like, okay, here we go. They, and the, they, the reason Ice Climbers wasn't in the game is because Ice Climbers didn't work in the 3DS version. Yeah. Um, well, Ice Climbers, that they announced something like Ice Climbers isn't going to be in the game because it won't work. And then people started getting pissed off about it before the game was even released. So they were like, oh, hey, it's going to be DLC. So I don't know if it's going to be Wii U DLC exclusively or it, it will it will have to be exclusive because uh, it killed the Ice Climbers were originally in development they killed the frame rate on the 3DS and I believe Nintendo was trying to keep a main roster complete on both the Wii U and 3DS so if the Ice Climbers do hit DLC it will be just Wii U yeah but there there's still so much room for DLC um. <laughs> Some of the characters in the full roster actually should have been DLC, in my opinion. I can name so many right off the bat. Dr. Mario should have been DLC. Lucina should have been DLC, or at least a skin for Marth instead of a full character. Because, yeah, she doesn't get the meteor smash at the end of her tip. A big fucking deal. <laughs> um, who else? Uh, Ganondorf should have had his own fucking move kit for, <laughs> for once. Oh, my God. Captain Sponge. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a Falcon main, and that just disappointed me that he still doesn't have his own moveset after 25 years plus of <laughs> games. Um, anyway, now that we're getting into Smash Brothers talk, uh, first of all, I think Ice Climbers will be free DLC, just throw that out there. Oh, yeah. 
Second of all, let's get into our own DLC suggestions for the future so we can keep the podcast moving. Dark Pit should have been DLC or a skin. <laughs> the first thing I would like to suggest, and we'll get back to Smash Brothers here in a second, don't worry. I think they should do more DLC offers from Club Nintendo because that, you know, it just. It's nice to get something free when you buy a game. Oh, yeah. It's like a paddle on the back. Here you go. You're our best friend. Thank you for buying our game. Like, I bought Halo Reach when it was new-ish, and I got the recon helmet with it. And that's, that's like, you can buy the recon helmet in the game already, but it's it was a free code. Just, hey, you got this. You bought this. Thanks for buying it for us. Here's a free helmet that you don't have to pay for. And I think that's pretty yeah, that's nice. that's pretty fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, moving forward, we talked about this in Facebook chat earlier, but Pokemon regions. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know the best way, maybe like mini regions, or even letting you go back to an old region. Make it DLC. You know, you have the game engine, just set, you know, half your crew on it. You don't need a full staff to make a sequel to a game. Majora's Mask is evidence of that. Yeah. Um, they actually said something about it and I, I was talking to you about it this uh earlier in facebook they said that they love the idea of having all the regions in a game but they want each region to feel separate and have its own experience to it and i can understand why they did that with the first two games because it was it was an idea they didn't really know how it was going to work and it worked fantastically in gold silver and crystal but a- a- after that it just took so much room in the cartridges to put all the all the fucking regions in there that they just couldn't do it. And I completely understand that. And at the, at the very least, I'm glad that we're getting remakes of the games, which, by the way, Nintendo Gen 1 remake, please? Again? For the, 3D, again? For the 3DS? Yes, How about again. just a Pokemon Yellow remake? How about that? that? That's fine. I don't care what game they choose, but as of right the- now... How about this to tie into our topic? Pokemon Yellow as DLC for Pokemon Omega Alpha. Root. Yeah. Yeah. Or even X and Y. Like, you could make a Pokemon Yellow DLC where you take a plane or something and just go to the Kanto region. Um, but I just want to be able to visit the Kanto region on a DS because as of right now, the last DS console that was able to play the Game Boy Advance games, and that's why the 3DS remakes of Ruby and Sapphire are coming, were the DS Lite, and those aren't in production anymore. After that, no more Game Boy Advance games were able to be played on those consoles, so unless you have one of those old DSs that aren't in production anymore, you're not going to be able to transfer up your Game Boy Advance Pokemon to the current gen, so... I don't, exactly. There's plenty of ways to get all of the Pokemon in the Pokedex anyway, but I mean, if the point is to catch them all, then you should probably you kind of want to go through all of the regions and actually catch them all in their region. And the point is talking about DLC, it's all about making money. Well, making these remakes of these games makes a shit ton of money. Exactly. People are gonna buy a Pokemon Gen One remake again. Yeah. You know, people are gonna buy Final Fantasy VII HD Square. Make it. <laughs> yes, you yes, sound we just will. Like, you sound just like my girlfriend. Well, thanks. <laughs> anyway, the last DLC point I'd like to make before we go Smash Brothers talk again is uh, this is gonna like like kind of hurt your feelings because it's borrowing from the Luigi U uh, idea. But anyway, you have the Legend of Zelda: A Link Between Worlds, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a brand new game engine you built just for that game. Yeah. Why don't you use that and build a secondary game called? The Legend of Zelda Link Between to Past 3D. Sell it as a DLC for Link Between Worlds and standalone. Um, okay. And, see, and Link and Link Between Worlds started out as a Link Between Past remake, so they got they got shit down already. Yeah. Um. There. The difference between that and the Luigi U was I'm pretty sure that the Luigi U was an afterthought, whereas a Link to the Past was the the remake was a before thought that transformed into its own game. I yeah. can. I can deal with A Link to the Past being a remake being a, uh, a DLC for A Link Between Worlds um, where you go into it through the menu, kind of like the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time. I See, don't... That, that's just interesting to me. Make it. Yeah. Sell it. Make money. Nintendo, you like money. I, I still feel like it should only be a standalone game rather than a DLC, but I, I can deal with it being specifically because it was a before thought. 
I can deal with it being both DLC and a standalone game. Well, well, the point of my making it DLC is because I don't know if people would buy it. Because unless they made the game really obnoxious, like the Ocarina of Times and the Twilight Princesses, yeah. where you lose a lot of time opening chess and talking dialogue, if they kept the, kept the game as it is, just made it 3D, the game's still going to take you three hours to beat. Yeah. So it's it's a, it's a shorter game than most games today. Now, yeah, adding actually, all of that Ocarina of Time fluff, yes, the game would be really long, but um, actually, kind of yeah, but like that's only if you're going through the main storyline, right? The whole point of Zelda games is to explore and check rooms for new treasure. That's but yes, where but the you game can, time comes from. You can 100 percent a link to me uh, a link to the past in two hours and 15 minutes. Is that for a casual player, or is that for someone who's been playing it for? like 20 years for a casual player yeah, it's gonna take a little longer than that yes but the the point is it's still gonna be a short game yeah true i will give compared you compared to a link between worlds i will give you that yeah anyway you can go back on your smash talk um I, I i feel like specifically certain characters that i want to see as dlc in smash bros bomberman I've been saying this since before Brawl. I want to see Bomberman. Bomberman? That Bomberman. would be legit. <laughs> right? I, okay, I have so many ways and ideas that Bomberman could be implemented in Smash. Like, his normal B would be a bomb, and if you hold the normal B, you could charge up a bomb and make the, the bigger bomb. Uh, a down B could be, like, one of the the animals from Bomberman Jetters. Uh the up B could be, uh, I don't know, probably some generic spin uppercut that ends in a, an explosion. Or or even like the forward B could be one of the animals and the, the down B could be a mine bomb. Uh, there's just so many possibilities for it. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm frankly disappointed that they didn't take the opportunity to make Bomberman. But then again... Bomberman but, doesn't have that big of a following, especially after it's shifted away from Nintendo consoles. Yeah, Bomberman's a third party that doesn't have a lot of attention, plus there'd be money involved. Nintendo wants to pay for a character that nobody cares about. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky we have Sonic in the games. I mean, a lot of people True. don't like Sonic in the games, but whatever. But, so, um, I, I, I think that, you know, another character that they could put in is Knuckles. Um... I feel like he's just begging to be put into a, a fighting game that isn't god-awful horrible. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so uh, I guess uh, you've worked out his, all, all his uh, moveset, too? Oh, no. Um, but they're, they're all the upgrades that are specifically in the Sonic Adventure games, I'm sure you could work stuff into that. Like, his, his down B could be a, a, sort of like a pile driver, I guess, and that would make him dig into the ground and find, oh, hey, an item. Or in the instance of For Glory, just nothing. It gives you invincibility frames. Um, he, he could have a gliding mechanic. Not not a flying mechanic, but like a gliding mechanic similar to Peach and her parasol. Okay. Um, I, I think Dr. Robotnik, for one, could be a pretty unique, unique character. Uh, and I think we're asking a lot, though, for multiple characters from third-party games. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. These are just ideas coming that would be interesting to see in Smash. Probably not going to ever happen. But see, why don't they throw in a Final Fantasy character from Final Fantasy one through six? Okay, look, they already have <laughs> Shulk and so many Fire Emblem characters. <laughs> they might as well at some point. And I know so many people are begging for Kingdom Hearts characters DLC, maybe. I mean, but, I, but Kingdom Hearts has never been on it. Well, I guess it 3DS, has, but it's never been on a main console. It's been on a handheld, but not on a main console. Hey, Smash 3DS exclusive DLC. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I understand that Square Enix isn't a Nintendo company. And they're very third party, especially after the split from Sony. But the split from Sony could be exactly the excuse they need to put a character from Kingdom Hearts in Smash. Uh, I know specifically my girlfriend would love, would kill to see, like, Axel and Sora in. Well, I've been saying all along Final Fantasy VII HD will end up on a Wii U, but... <laughs> anyway. For, for so, a long time now. So Smash is going to get a, a a pretty good handful of DLC, I think. It's going to have character packs, it's going to have map packs, it's going to have everything you need. But... 
it better have a story mode at some point because we oh, need a story de- mode. Definitely. Yeah, and, and, and you already touched this, but there was the that was my mode. favorite. That was my favorite part of Brawl. I'm sorry. Me, me too. Um, there wasn't much to do after the story mode besides just fight with people, which is what fighters are about. But like melee had the adventure mode, and that was cool. But it was pretty short. You could beat beat it with all the characters in probably a day. Yeah, I did that actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the the brawl had the subspace, which took significantly longer than a day. Oh yeah. Um, I just and pl- plus we need to give uh, the runaway guides an excuse to play the Smash. 3ds or Wii U version. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, hopefully all that shit comes to uh, Smash Brothers, especially the story. Get the characters. We know we're gonna get characters. We're nowhere to get characters we we can't even think of yet, so that's gonna be fun. Because who who else or who in the world thought let's put Pac Man in Smash Brothers? What? I mean, it the happened. Same, the same could be said about Melee. Who would have ever thought to put Mister Game and Watch as a character, let alone the last character you're able to unlock? Exactly. <laughs> and Game and Watch is awesome because that's like oh I was there almost. Yeah, but I anyway. love Game and Watch. <laughs> like he he was one of my mains in Melee and Brawl. Not so much in the 3DS version, but I still like playing him. Well, I actually took a, like uh, looked at his character, his move set, and I actually looked back at the Game and Watch games, which Game and Watch wasn't the star of Game and Watch games for the most part. He, yeah, but they took the individual games and they took his move set from characters in the games, which is pretty awesome. Oh yeah. So, uh, but we're we've been talking about Smash Brothers for like fifteen minutes now. We probably should move along and talk about how to give the main series. Speaking Mario and Zelda, Metroid, whatever, good DLC. By good, I mean it's perfectly... Okay. I will um, buy it, but not because I have to buy it to beat the game. That's what I'm trying to say. Specifically for Metroid. Um, Samus Metroid, already... I, I would say Metroid has a lot of options. A Definitely. lot more than Zelda. Definitely. Like, the main... Star Fox would have a lot of options, too. The main... Sorry. <laughs> That's if a Star Fox game comes to the Wii U. Star Fox was announced at E3, buddy. I didn't watch most of E3, which I regret because I missed most of it because I was sleeping. It was it was during the Nintendo Treehouse. Uh, Miyamoto was playing Star Fox in the background. Ah. Mm-hmm. Um, Wii U. Well, like Metroid, the main idea that comes to head my head for Metroid would be Samus has her starship. You could have, like, because I remember in Metroid Prime, uh, you, you started off the game, you did the tutorial level, and then you got, you touched down and left your starship. You could go back to the starship, and instead of it being a save mechanic, it could take you to, like, a DLC area that you paid for. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, like, a new planet to explore. Yeah, Definitely. Um, as far as Mario, Mario has a few more options than Zelda does. Mario, you can, you know, unlock special Yoshi colors, whatever. Um, new levels. Because Mario, for the most part, since going to the 3D uh, on uh, 64, has been set up by going to levels via portals and stuff. You could add, you know, like, a second, you know, Bowser's Castle with portals while you have uh, Peach's Castle over there with portals. Yeah, exactly. So you can just add new worlds and shit like that. Um, and add characters. You could add Wario to, you know, make it Super Mario 64 DS. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. As far as Zelda, Zelda is a much... I, I'm not going to say dark, because that's the wrong word, but a serious game, so to speak. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, definitely. Because mm-hmm. the only games that... Like, Mario 64 had a plot, but it was barely existent. Sunshine had a plot that was completely thrown in your face, which I love Sunshine. I'm the Sunshine guy. Um, so, some part of Sunshine need, needed a little tweaks, which they fixed in Galaxy. Galaxy was definitely more story-oriented than Sunshine, but it didn't throw it in your face. It was just like, oh, hey, here's story, and then more story will be over here if you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. As far as Zelda, though, it's story-driven, it's character-driven. Mm-hmm. Ironically, because the main character never talks, but... <laughs> which, they, which, they kind of make fun of that in Hyrule Warriors, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but, as far as, like, Zelda, I can't really think... 
I mean, you could give him skins, but, like, adding, you know, like, worlds to explore afterwards, you know, it just wouldn't feel right for a Zelda game. Yeah. Um, um, maybe, maybe a Master Quest type deal as DLC, but... Um, my camera is on for some reason, so that's weird. <laughs> but... uh, actually, I, I could think of something. Um, like, in... Say there's this archaeologist that isn't really plot important in the Zelda U game. And he, you come across him in Castletown or something like that. And he's just like, oh, general crazy batshit scientist guy. And then once you buy a DLC and you go back and talk to him, he'll be like, oh, hey, I found this these new dungeons out here. I haven't had a chance to explore them, but I just thought I'd let you know about this magnificent discovery. Ah, so you're saying have, like, a sub-quest, you know, like, guys that initiate sub-quests. Yeah, exactly. Now, would they give away items that would help you towards the end of the game? Uh, they could. They could also give you... They, they could give you items, like, similar to the Megaton Hammer. Like, they could upgrade your items. They could give you heart pieces. There's all sorts of opportunities for items that they can give you. And for, like, for the dungeons, definitely they could give you another heart container just flat out for free so you could end up the game with like 25 heart containers instead of 20 yeah game breaking <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was you know i was trying to think of possibilities for a zelda dlc but it's a lot harder to think of good ideas oh yeah, yeah. I, I i will say it's a lot harder but because of the great game breaking part of it you know if you add new items that um help you towards the end there's that but if you only add items that help you with the dlc part yeah well i i would say you need the game 100 percent completable and fun and it's it's a it's a game it's a full game yeah by itself no dlc if you're gonna add dlc with extra dungeons with extra items yeah you can do it to make say the a boss fight easier in the main game but don't make it like the main item to beat the boss because therefore you can't beat the game without dlc yeah which is bullshit and there are companies that do it and i'm gonna hit you in the nuts when i see you and then where do you add in this i mean do you add it in where you can go in the middle of the game to a dlc part or you well have to be at the end to go it's been well documented that zelda U is going to be pretty fucking open much like leap between worlds was so you're probably going to be able to access most things right off the bat, unless they do a split world thing, which has been going on since the link between uh, link to the past. So, eh, maybe, or or a Borders Land thing where you talk to the first guy you see and he's like, "You want to go to the DLC maps?" Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not really a guy because like nobody tells you about DLC because that would break the immersion. But I definitely get what you're saying. The new U stations. Oh, hey, you have maps that you're not even supposed to access yet because if you didn't have any of this DLC, you wouldn't be able to access the first new U station in Borderlands 2, or, well, not new U, the uh, first fast travel station in Borderlands 2 because you don't have another place to travel to. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think Nintendo has a good opportunity here, but I'm always cautious about Nintendo and DLC because Nintendo does weird shit sometimes. And I I'm a huge supporter of Nintendo, we all know that. Nintendo fanboyism is huge with this one. But... I do worry about Nintendo fucking things up. Um, like, like imagine like an Animal Crossing game, where you can't do anything in the game unless you buy the DLC, and I'm afraid that's where it's coming towards. Yeah. Now, Nintendo, hopefully, Nintendo will prove me wrong, but Nintendo has been known to fuck things up in the past. Well, okay, like Animal Crossing already has DLC, similar to how Pokemon does it. They have mystery gifts. Um, occasionally, N Game Freak will be like, "Oh, hey, here's a, a Pokemon. Download it via the internet." Animal Crossing, specifically New Leaf, does that too, where you can go to the post offices and check for DLC items, and they'll be like, oh, hey, enjoy your new pile of leaves. Enjoy your new recliner. Which is cool. I mean, I like that. Yeah. But as far as paid DLC, I don't want them to make it where like the game sucks without the DLC. Yeah. The, th th that's just horrible if you make a game that sucks without the DLC. Or if you make the game and then take sections of the game out, and call it DLC. That's bullshit, too. That EA <laughs> is a right. big... But all I'm saying is we need really good DLC if we're going to do the DLC thing, which is somewhat new. I mean, it's been going on for a few years at Nintendo. Uh, it's been going on for, you know, a decade everywhere else, but... Yeah. 
Nintendo didn't really want to get their dick wet in that area yet. But unfortunately, times change, and here we are, and we're talking about it. And that's the turn-based comedy podcast. <laughs> uh, for Cryptos, Fang, and Morgoloth, I'm Horeo. Thank you for listening. <laughs>